Like all people, this baby began life as a single cell, called a zygote, formed from the union of the male sperm and the female egg during reproduction. In less than a year, however, the single cell has transformed into a complex network of over 200 different types of cells. But how did this complexity occur? The key to understanding this transformation is found within the nucleus of our cells, where our genetic material is stored. Our genetic material is made of both our genome and our epigenome. The genome is the complete set of DNA found in the cell. Each cell in our bodies contains two copies of 23 DNA strands, one from mom and one from dad. Each strand of DNA consists of thousands of segments called genes, which encode for and regulate protein production. Proteins are large molecules that perform the majority of functions in our cells. To regulate protein production, each of the 46 DNA strands are coiled around histones, much like thread wrapped around a spool. The epigenome consists of chemical tags that modify the genome and tell it when to turn a gene on and when to turn a gene off. When a gene is turned on, it unwinds from the histone so that the instructions for protein production can be read by a group of proteins known as the transcription factor. If a gene is turned off, the gene remains tightly wrapped around the histone and is inactive. Unlike the genome, our epigenome changes throughout our lives by adapting to environmental cues. As our cells divide and differentiate, they become more specialized by altering their epigenome. For instance, genes turned on in muscle cells may be turned off in skin cells. Therefore, the epigenome of a muscle cell is different from that of a skin cell. As we grow and develop throughout our lives, our epigenome continues to change based on lifestyle and environmental factors. What you eat and drink the medicines you take, and the pollutants you encounter can all impact your epigenome.